Welcome to step number six of Enable Training and Consulting's seven steps to FRC robot success videos. In this video, we're going to add a shift register in order to rotate a servo motor 10 degrees each time a button on the joystick is pressed. We're going to start in the block diagram of the Teleop sub VI with the code that we created for step three of this video series. The first thing we'll do is delete the axis four information and the add and multiply functions we used before. We'll then use Control B to clean up the broken wires. Because we want to use a joystick button to advance our servo motor, we'll need to extract the button state information from the joystick get subvi. To do this, we'll find the unbundle by name function in the cluster class and variant subpalette. And drop it to the right of the joystick get subvi. We'll now wire the button's output into the unbundle by name function, and we can see that the button 1 data is selected by default. In order to have our servo advance by 10 degrees when the button is pressed, we'll need to get the current angle to calculate the angle we want to move to. To do this, we'll access the servo subpalette of the WPI Robotics Library and drop the servo get angle subvi between the servo get reference subvi and the servo set angle subvi. The next thing to do is to connect the servo device reference wires from the servo get reference subvi to the servo get angle subvi. And then from the servo get angle subvi to the servo set angle subvi. Joystick button 1 has two states. We want our servo to move when the button is true and do nothing when it's not. So we'll use a case select structure and drag it around the angle get subvi and the angle set subvi. Because nothing should move when the button has not been pressed, the false case of our select structure should be empty. Back in the true case, we'll place an add function to add 10 degrees to the current angle value. And a greater than or equal to function to compare the new value with a constant of 170. Then we'll wire the add and the greater than or equal to functions. Then we'll wire the numeric constants to the add and the greater than or equal to functions. When the current angle plus 10 is greater than 170, we want to set the servo back to zero. To do this, we'll need to add another case select structure. We'll wire the output of the comparison function to the selector terminal of the case structure. In the true case, we'll place a numeric constant of 0. We then wire that constant through the case structure and into the angle input of the servo set angle subvi. When the comparison function returns a true, a value of 0 will get sent to the servo set angle subvi. When the comparison function returns a false, we want to move the servo motor another 10 degrees from where it is. So we'll switch to the false case and wire the output of the add function right through the case to the output tunnel.
If we were to run the program as it is, the servo angle would continuously increase as we held down the button. We only want the servo to move by 10 degrees regardless of how long we hold the button. To do this, we're going to use a shift register to remember the previous value of the button and only increase the servo angle when the button is true in this iteration of the loop but was false in the previous one. The teleop sub VI doesn't have a while loop, but it resides inside the while loop of the robot main VI. To add a shift register, right click on the while loop and select Add Shift Register. Our shift register will be carrying Boolean data, so we'll initialize it with a Boolean false constant found in the Boolean subpalette. Let's go back to the front panel of the Teleop subVI. We need to bring the previous value of the button into the subVI and pass the current value out. To do this, we'll add a control for the previous value, and an indicator for the current value. To make this control and indicator available outside of the subVI, we need to wire them to the subVI's connector pane. To do this, right click on the subVI's icon in the top right corner and select Show Connector. Then click on one of the little boxes in the connector pane and select the control to associate with that connector. Do the same for the indicator. Now, Wire the shift register on the left of the while loop into the previous value terminal on the teleop subVI. Then, wire the current value terminal of the teleop subVI to the shift register on the right of the while loop. As we can see by the broken run arrow in the upper left corner of the robot main VI, something is still missing. The tunnel on the right side of the case select structure is a hollow box, meaning that some cases have no data connected to this tunnel. To fix this, we'll go through all of the cases and wire the incoming tunnel to the outgoing tunnel. Now we'll finish the code in the Teleop subVI. First, we'll wire the button 1 data into the current button value indicator. Then, we'll place an AND function and a NOT function on the block diagram to the left of the case structure. We'll wire the output of the previous button value control to the input of the NOT function, and then wire the output of the NOT function to one of the inputs of the AND function. And connect the output to the selector terminal. We'll then wire the button 1 data which is the current button value, into the other input of the AND function. When the button is pressed, the output value of the AND function to the case selector will only be true for one iteration of the robot main loop. If the button is held longer than one iteration of the loop, the previous button value returned by the shift register will be true. The output of the AND function will then be false and the servo motor will not move. 
When the button is released, the previous button value control will be false on the next iteration of the robot main loop. If the button is now pressed again, the output of the AND function will be true, and the true case of the case structure will be selected, moving our servo. In step 6 of our 7 steps to FRC robot success, we demonstrated how to pass data from one iteration of a while loop to the next by adding a shift register. We also showed how to pass data into and out of sub-VIs.